Hello everybody and welcome back to another Raspberry Pi tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about how to turn your Raspberry Pi into a web server. Now the Raspberry Pi really isn't, um, well the Raspberry Pi itself is actually a decent web server. I mean you could run a pretty, um, probably like 90% of the websites on the internet today could be run off a of Raspberry Pi. The actual weak spot is your SD card. Uh, because the SD card isn't really built for bulk read and write operations, which websites do frequently, especially if you have, say, like a WordPress blog with comments where you've got um, like a forum or something like that. Like you, you couldn't, you just couldn't do it. You would just, you'd kill your SD card. So it's not really going to be a functional website. You could make a pretty decent static website off of it, but instead, what you will get from this is simply a ton of educational value just like pretty much everything with the Raspberry Pi I means great teaching device you know if I was a professor and I was teaching classes either on like supercomputers networking web server kind of stuff I mean you wouldn't need a textbook you would need a Raspberry Pi and they're so cheap that you can get one you know especially when it comes to like supercomputers it's like okay we'll buy like 16 of the Raspberry Pis and you have a, you have a supercomputer or a decent amount to at least test uh, networking on and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, um, so while it won't necessarily be like a wonderful website for or a web server for you, instead what it'll do is actually teach you how to how to work with a web server. Like if you have like a VPS or something for um, a website, instead of paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month. Uh, to get like a managed VPS, just manage it yourself. Or you could later get a job, you know, managing web servers as you learn more about them. So anyways, um, it's really just for teaching. I wouldn't suggest you use these websites uh, just yet, but I'll be showing you guys pretty much all the stuff that's required uh, for a web server. And by the end of this, we'll at least have a basic web page um, displayed. So with that, let's go ahead and hop right on into it. Um, you don't have to go to your desktop, by the way. For most of my tutorials, I just go to it, just in case people are uncomfortable with uh, starting into the terminal. But basically, what we're going to be using is just the terminal. So um, either if you go straight to your desktop on startup, then open up your terminal. And uh, if not, you don't have to be in your terminal. Um, or I mean, you don't have to be in your desktop, rather. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we actually start installing stuff and making up a page, we have to do a really just, most of this is a lot of housekeeping. So uh, the first thing we want to do is consider memory split. If you're running off of a older version of Raspberry Pi, you definitely want to do a firmware update if you plan to turn your Raspberry Pi into some sort of web server. This is because you can utilize uh, memory split, basically, uh, which is which will allow your GPU and your processor to interact with each other, like the memory between them will now be dynamic. Or actually, I'm sorry, if you have a newer version, it's, it already is dynamic. But you can set the limits of, you know, when does the processor start pulling and how much can the processor pull and so on. So anyway, once you, um, one of the things that you can do immediately is go into uh, sudo raspi-config. And that should launch up your, it's not a BIOS, but I think of it like one a lot. Um, and what you're going to want to do is um, go into advanced options. And in there, you should see memory split. And so we'll hit that. And we really don't need 64. If you're going to run a web server, you just don't need that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to back this up and change it to 16. Now, for the purposes of just learning how to set up a web server, you don't really need to do that. But... Since we are kind of just trying to teach you all this stuff, might as well do everything right. So we'll hit OK, and it might, I think it's going to want to restart after we do this, so let's see. Yeah, it's going to want to reboot, so go ahead and hit yes, and go through the reboot process. And if you don't go to desktop, don't worry about start X, just wait in your terminal and we'll re-meet once, uh, once my Pi has rebooted. All right, guys, welcome back. I actually forgot to do one more thing. If we want to be a true um, web server, we actually need one more change, but that's okay. 
Um, let me let we'll go ahead and go through it anyways. It might want another reboot, but sorry guys. So anyway, go back into your Raspi dash config here. And what we want to go into is again advanced options. And what we want to do is enable SSH. Um, it's pretty much the better way to be connecting to your server. Um, you can look around and find out like FTP and stuff. And if you've ever dealt with having a website and stuff, um, let's see. hopefully, let's see. Anyway, if you've ever dealt with having a website, you've probably used FTP before. But it's actually not the most secure way to. Um, or it's not the most secure system to be having on your um, your web server. So if security is of any concern at all, it's probably better just to stick with purely SSH. But anyway, let's hit finish, see if I've got a reboot. Uh, doesn't look like it. Looks like um, it just starts it. I'm not sure if it'll start it every uh, on every boot or not, but I bet it would. So anyways, let's go ahead and continue on. So the next bit of housekeeping that we really need to take care of is getting Debian up to date. And then we need to make sure we're um, up to date on our firmware. Now, if you guys have been following my tutorials, um, chances are you're up to date on your firmware, but there's actually a quicker way to update your firmware that I found out. So we'll go through the uh, quicker way, and now you guys can update your firmware much easier than like literally typing in that hash code. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and get started with uh, updating that. The code here is going to be, first we want to do sudo dpkg dash reconfigure tz data and this is going to be for time zone data so you'll be able to choose um, what time zone um, your pi is or your now your web server so uh, you will want to choose wherever you are in my case I'm in the United States and um, we'll go ahead and pick Eastern for the time zone And now we've got local time and then universal time, which is obviously in UTC or GMT, whatever you want to uh, call it. So continuing on now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to get update. So sudo apt uh, get update. And this is going to download, um, I want to say your, uh, any updates that you need or the updater, but I'm pretty sure this is just all your updates. Now, I was just thinking of a side note. Uh, if you're overclocked, hopefully this process is going faster than you. I ended up having to reinstall everything on my Pi uh, the first time I went through this, and it might have failed for some of you guys too. When I changed the memory split settings, um, my Pi just stopped working. <laughs> so I had to go through and do it again, and then it actually did, um, it did work. But uh, currently, my Raspberry Pi is no longer uh, overclocked. So if yours is overclocked, hopefully that went faster for you than it did for me. But anyway, so the next thing that we want to do once that is done um, running is now sudo apt get upgrade and go through that same kind of junk again and just wait. So I'm going to pause while we're going through it again. Oh, and then you can free up some space absolutely as we upgrade. Don't worry, you'll fill it back in a minute. Okay, once that is done, now what we want to do is actually let's go ahead and get a newer, a newest firmware update. And what we're going to want to do is, if you have already um, been watching my tutorials, then you already have RPI update. But if you don't, I will try to remember to post the link in the bottom for the RPI update um, info. Let's see if I can get this to come in. I'm trying my best to just copy and paste into this bad boy. It's not going to let me do it. Let's see. Um, possible RPI updates already in here. Let's try this then. We'll do sudo rpi-update. Please tell me we already have it. Oh, thank the Lord. Anyway, so it uh, looks like if you've had a newer version of uh, Raspberry Pi, it already has RPI update installed, so you won't have to go get it. If you don't, then check out uh, one of my previous tutorials for manually updating your firmware and you should already have RPI update installed. I was worried because I've actually 
since that video, I think I've reinstalled my, uh, well, I've like completely formatted, reformatted my, uh, and reinstalled the operating system like three or four times, so I just didn't think I had it anymore, but I do. So anyways, um, run that, and then you'll be updating your firmware, and uh, so I'm going to pause the video again, and uh, we'll restart once this is uh, finished. Alrighty, once you've done that, that one was probably the longest one of them all, for me at least, the next thing that we're going to need to do is indeed um, reboot. Um, I didn't see any errors in mine. If you got errors, then you'll just have to redo it. But um, if you didn't see any errors, errors, the next thing you want to do is do sudo reboot, and that's going to obviously reboot. And um, so once we're done there, uh, we'll continue again. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back, and uh, let's go ahead and continue right along. Next thing that we're going to want to do is um, change our password. It's probably the best idea um, because we're going to be making a web server out of this, and if anybody knows that you're running a <laughs> web server off your Pi, then they already know your credentials. So to change your password, all you do is sudo passwd and the username. And this is going to come up with enter a, U, a new Unix password. And so for this, I'm going to enter my own password. And it's going to ask you to do it again. And it'll be updated. You'll also enter a root user password, um, for sure with MySQL. But we'll get to that. So the next thing that we want to do, uh, once we've done that, is install Apache and PHP. So to do this, uh, what we're going to need is sudo apps get install and we want to install apache 2 php 5 and a uh, lib apache lib apache 2 mod and we want php 5 with it and that should be it always a good idea to check your line let's see uh, apt get apt get there we go so now what this is going to do is go ahead and install Apache 2 and PHP 5 on your Raspberry Pi. And we're going to need um, some more space. That's good with me. And uh, continuing right along. And so I'm going to go ahead and pause it as this is going through this, and we'll restart again. All right, everybody. Once we've done that, the next thing that we might want to have is some sort of database. And uh, the most popular one is probably MySQL or MySQL. And the way that we're going to go ahead and get that is going to be sudo apt get. And we want to install MySQL server. Yep. Server. And then MySQL client PHP 5 MySQL. So what that's going to go ahead and do, hopefully, if that runs through for us, is start installing MySQL. So again, yet another pause while it does this and you'll get this uh, question as far as dicks dicks space discs never mind just hit yes ah and then once you have gotten so far it will ask you if you want to change um, the root user password and for that I would highly recommend that you do such a thing so in this case I'm gonna put that in there and it will have you repeat it and it will continue right along. Pausing again. Alrighty, once you have made it through all of that, the next thing that we're going to need to do is restart Apache 2. Quite simple. sudo service, service, uh, Apache 2 restart. And that will go ahead and restart it up for us. And once this is done, it should go pretty quick. Yeah. So um, eventually we will indeed change up um, and, and possibly do a tutorial at least on dynamic DNS. But for now, obviously, it, we don't have a domain name, so it's just going to use a local address basically for our uh, server name. Um, and we will get to viewing the web page in just a minute, but the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and open up our PHP info page. So sudo, let me move my mouse, sudo nano. Uh, and we want to go into var www slash and then php info dot php. That's going to open up an empty page for us, and now we're going to create the information that we need. Now within here, we're actually making ourselves a PHP page, so you're going to need PHP tags. 
pull this off. And then in here, uh, we want to put in PHP info. And that's pretty much it. That's all we really need here. So we'll go ahead and control X. Uh, yes, same name. And now we've made our PHP info page. So if we bop over to our internet browser, let's go internet. I know there's one down there, but I'm at, I think NetSurf is faster than this one. And since we're not downloading anything, we're gonna use NetSurf. So we shall wait. And what we're gonna wanna do is just put in your computer's local IP address. It's usually gonna be 192.168.0, and then like your computer's number. In this case, or in my case, this is computer 12. So uh, it's 192.168.0.12. And then what we're gonna look for is slash php info.php. So if we enter that, we should be brought to our uh, PHP info page, so to speak. I guess it's just going to take like four years to do it in this browser. Or maybe it's just not going to do it in this browser at all. Let's open up the other browser. If not, I'll just drag over a, a Chrome on my other computer or something. Okay, let's try it one more time. So 192.168.0.12 slash php info.php. Hopefully this will take us there. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, we're connected just to our local machine. Uh, eventually, you can make your local machine use a dy like with dynamic DNS and use a, a domain name and actually access it and everything would be awesome. Um, but for now, we're just going to use our local IP. And I would be willing to guess, I th think at the moment, we could actually use the, um, the actual IP address as well, which is why security is important. Um, let me test that. I'm going to find out for sure, just because just I'm curious. All right. Anyway, I wanted to make sure, but yeah, so far I am unable to use it with the actual IP address. Um, but I bet you could open up a specific port and access it, and there might already be a pre-opened port. Um, so anyway, just just take warning of that if you're um, if you are doing this and you're going to eventually maybe put up a website or um, someone is to, to learn your IP address and the correct port to get into your uh, Raspberry Pi. Just understand you you are connected to the internet. You did just install a web server to your Raspberry Pi, and chances are your Raspberry Pi is operating on the exact same network as your other computers. So just understand what you're doing. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's that. Uh, that's the PHP info. And then obviously, I mean, now it, it's a web server. So for example, um, we could come back over here, and we could sudo nano slash var slash www slash um, example.php. Let's uh, grab a quick PHP page. And in here, um, we'll just do PHP and PHP. And we'll just echo out like, um, I don't know, hey, this is and uh, awesome. And you're all awesome, right? <laughs> all right, so anyway, uh, we'll just do something like that. Control X. Yes to save, enter to save to that same page, and now it's example.php. So we can pop over here and uh, instead of php info.php, we can go example.php. And it obviously, hey, this is awesome, right? So, anyway, that is a basic, and I mean basic, um, tutorial on how to install or basically convert your Raspberry Pi into a web server. Now there's obviously a lot of things that need to be done before it could be actually a web page and a secure web page, right? Um, and I probably will eventually get to at least doing the dynamic DNS part just so you could actually turn your Raspberry Pi into a website, into a web server, and then later on you can actually use that instead of being like a website for people to look at, you can use it as a way to kind of like remote access um, your entire home network basically. So you can do some pretty cool stuff uh, with that capability. So eventually we will get to that, but I just wanted to get through all the basics for you guys. I think it's pretty exciting, it's pretty cool. And then also, 
you can start messing around with this stuff. So like if you're not really comfortable about uh, buying like a VPS because you don't really know how to do it, but you're tired of your web host sucking or whatever, um, this is a good way to kind of segue yourself into the operation of a VPS. Uh, and then also, you know, like you don't have to pay for hosting of websites. Um, you, you can do it all yourself. And if you just have like a little bitty static website, like sometimes it just makes sense to just buy your own little computer and host that static website off of it. And I'm pretty sure a Raspberry Pi would host a static page uh, really, really well. So anyway, that's that. That's going to conclude this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys are enjoying your Raspberry Pi. It's a whole lot of fun, at least in my opinion. And it can teach you all kinds of stuff. And if you ever just screw up, you just reinstall the operating system and go again. And I guess if you really royally screwed up, just buy another Pi. So anyway, I'm just absolutely loving my Pi. Hopefully you guys are too. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support, your subscriptions. And until next time.